Hello, I'm off to Wales to do a day's filming, so I thought I'd bring you along. It might involve some stealth camping in a car park. Exciting stuff. Wales is very straightforward to reach from the Midlands. You start by going down the M5 motorway until you get just past Strensham services. There you turn off. Continue for half a mile. In half a mile, at Strensham Interchange, take the second exit onto M50 heading to South Wales, Ross. You turn right at the roundabout. Exit the roundabout onto M50. Continue on M50 for 21 miles. Of course, just reaching Wales is one thing. Getting as far west as Carmarthen takes a bit longer. The M50 eventually runs out and you turn onto the A40. Through Monmouth Tunnel. And after a short while, you're on the M4, going over the top of Newport. If you remember to change into the right lane, you'll keep going towards Cardiff. An hour later, past Cardiff and Swansea, the M4 runs out and the A48 takes up the rest of the journey. The village of Ferryside, which was my target, is south of Carmarthen, so with just nine miles left, you turn onto another, lesser A road. Exit the roundabout onto A484. In a quarter of a mile at the roundabout, take the second exit and stay on A484. And at this point, I was almost there. Turn right. This is Ferryside. In 300 yards, your destination will be on the left. My specific destination was a small car park, handily located right next to where I wanted to film. I'd be filming that evening and again the following morning. Your destination is on the left. Now I had the classic dilemma of trying to pick the best parking space, a bit like trying to choose a mooring spot for the boat. They'll always be somewhere better that you notice once you've stopped. However, here they were all much of a muchness. And here I am in the ferry side car park. There's the van. And as far as I can tell, this car park not only has no signs saying no staying overnight, but no signs or machines for paying for parking either, which is very unusual. Interesting little statue. And some information about the car park. Now behind the ferry cabin, it's the railway line, and behind that lies an estuary, which is why I'm here. Let's wander over. Check the line. There's the station. And the view the other way. No trains coming, let us cross. And look, there's the estuary. With the tide coming in, I believe. The local yacht club and here is part of what I'm here to film. A local ferry. Trips that start at seven o'clock according to this. Anyway, that'll all be over on the boating channel. 
but let's just have a quick look around. That's rather pretty, isn't it? The beach, I mean, not the tractor with the bags of rubbish. There's that delightful slight smell of fish in the air that you get on a beach sometimes. What a glorious evening. I'm now back in the van, as you can see, done all the filming. It is half past nine, so it's now dark outside. Today was, so theoretically, was the last of the heatwave days we've been having here in the UK. It should be cooling down quite a bit tomorrow. But I did get very, very hot and unpleasantly sweaty running around with the camera doing the filming earlier, all a bit nasty. And, of course, I haven't got a shower here in the van. I've got a shower tent, but I can't really put that up in a car park which is where I am parked. So I think I'm going to lay out a towel and give myself some sort of flannel wash, like I'm a hospital patient or something, and just try and clean myself up a bit. And then I've got some cheese sandwiches to eat for my supper. And then finally I shall try to go to sleep. The van is on a very slight slope, because the car park is sloping down. So I think I should be lying this way instead of that way. Head at the fridge end instead of head at the driver's cab end. Morning view from the car park. I don't know if you can hear it, but the alarm is going off for the railway crossing again. But you might just be able to see the lights flashing. It's about eight o'clock. Things are a little chaotic in here. I've got that towel which I use to dry myself and that towel which I spread out to sit on so that I wouldn't soak everything as I gave myself a flannel wash and still nowhere really to dry them. I must get around to sorting out drying arrangements. I did wonder whether someone else was going to be sleeping in the car park overnight but there's no signs of anyone in there. Breakfast of champions. Cereal, although I do argue that Kellogg's multi-grain shapes are revolting. Here I've added Frosties to make them more palatable. Cup of tea, multivitamins, strepsils for my poor old throat. Ah, delicious. That's all my filming done. I've had a very good morning actually, very enjoyable and some good filming. And now I'm off to visit some friends, former narrowboaters who now live in Wales. Out of the car park, back the way I came. Continue for three miles. Here, I threw up my hands in temper because despite main roads all the way getting here, Google now did its trick of sending me down stupidly narrow tracks even though I was going back on exactly the same route I came by. Why does it taunt me so? Finally, after a very hairy and possibly illegal right turn, I was on the main road again. And hooray, for the first time in weeks, it rained. Not much, but better than nothing. It cleaned the windscreen too. The only hiccup was a jam round Port Talbot for no readily apparent reason. But at last I reached my stop off. Well, I'm at the house of my friends and it's a bit of a restoration project. Who would live in a house like this? It's only Kath and Anna, formerly of the Narrowboat Experience. Hello! Hi guys! No one knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's OK, that's how we like it. We don't know who we are. <laughs> After a tour and a cup of tea, I headed home. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.